Hello, welcome back to our YouTube channel. My name is Lucy and I'm one of the speech and language therapists working here in Ealing. Welcome to our workshop on using visuals to support communication. Let's go over to the slides. So this session will cover strategies for all ages. So we'll talk about resources for younger children as well as older children. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to think about what visuals are, what the benefits of visuals are, how to use visuals at home, key things to remember, and then finally we'll cover some useful websites and I will guide you to different places you can get further support. So let's start by thinking about what are visuals. So let's have a think about what visuals help us in everyday life. So it could be things like road signs, diaries, calendars, food menus. And it could also be us using objects or facial expressions to support our message that we're trying to portray to other people. We might use pictures or we might use gesture or something called makaton, where we are using our hands to support what we are trying to say to people. So basically, visuals are everything that we do and use to support talking and understanding. So we're going to start with a quick activity where I'm going to read you a sentence from a story and I want you to try and guess what the sentence is or which story it's from. So, Plob saw the G hails of Jop, me was Nol Moo, Mo was Nol Flom, and my was huge fet. Now, I'm going to add some gestures to see if that helps you to understand what I was saying. Plob saw G hails of Jop. Me was Nol Moo. Mo was Nol Flom. And my was huge fet. OK, so that was with gestures. So now I'm going to add some visuals to see if that helps you even more. Let's see if we can work out what the sentence is and from which story. So Plob saw the G hails of Chop. Me was Nol Mu. Mo was Nol Flom. And my was huge fet. So I hope those visuals helped you figure out that the story was Goldilocks and the three bears. And it was Goldilocks was looking at the three bowls of porridge and one was too hot, one was too cold and one was just right. So there are different levels of visuals that we can use to support our children with their understanding and expressing their wants and needs. So this is a scale that kind of shows the types of visuals that are the easiest to understand and those that become the hardest to understand. So let's talk through each level. Objects. Physical objects represent concrete physical activities which can range from more obvious. So, for example, showing a football when you're playing football or to a spoon, which represents breakfast or a pencil, which might represent homework. The next longest photographs. So this is a photograph of the real object that you are using in real life. So it shows the child the real thing that they can see in their environment. Colour symbols. So these are a little bit more complicated as for this example here, breakfast. This might not look like exactly the same as the breakfast that your child is having, but it represents a wider range of breakfasts. But the symbol itself represents breakfast. The next one along is black and white line drawing. So this has much less context and clues to match the real life object or activity. So the main thing that's disappeared are the colours and colours can really help us distinguish between different things. So without them, it can make it a little bit more tricky. So an example might be that if you have a black and white drawing of an apple, but without the colour, it might look similar to a ball or an orange. And finally, 
are written words. So written words are the hardest to understand. Reading and understanding written words takes so much more skill. So you have to be able to read the word, process the word and then understand what that word means and what it's being referred to. So sometimes children can read words aloud, but not always understand what they mean. So it's really good just to double check that. It may be that if your child finds it hard to understand or focus for a short time, say on let's photos, then let's take a step back and use objects. And the same if they're finding written words hard to understand and process, use black and white line drawings or colour symbols. Okay, so we have now looked at what visuals are. So we're going to move on to thinking about what the benefits of visuals are. So using visuals can benefit a wide range of aspects of communication. So it could be thinking about understanding spoken and written language, supporting routine, supporting participation in home learning, as well as learning at school and as well as supporting attention and emotions. So I'm going to talk through nine reasons here as to why visuals are so beneficial. So the first one is that visuals are permanent, whereas spoken words can disappear. So the permanence of the visuals helps to give your child a concrete representation of what you are saying. Words disappear when you say them, but pictures and visuals stay there. The second one is that visuals help your child to see what you mean. So this follows on from the fact that they're permanent. They stay there and you can use the visuals to help describe what it is you're trying to say. The third is visuals allow time for language processing. So by having a visual that stays there, it provides the child with time to process what is being said to them, as well as time to generate their response. And by it being there, they can keep referring back to it to keep that while they're processing through their thoughts. The fourth is that visuals can prepare students for transition. So by showing your child what's going to happen next in visual form, it allows them to see what's going to happen, which then might help to reduce any anxieties about what is going to happen next. The next one is that visuals help all students, so any child can benefit from using visuals. Visuals can also help to build independence. So by using visuals, it allows the child to see and understand what they need to do without adult support and constant supervision. Visuals are transferable between environments and people. So this is really, really key for consistency across settings. So it could be that a school are using resources. So using those same resources at home will really support your child to have that consistency and understanding of what's being used and explained to them. The other great thing is that you can take them out and about with you. So they don't just have to be used in the home. You can use them at the park or in the supermarket. The next one is that visuals have no attitude. So, for example, they don't um, have any tone, they don't show frustration, they don't show disapproval, because sometimes as humans, without even knowing, we can add extra meaning to what we're saying. And visuals don't have that ability, so it takes away all kind of the human attitude away from things and the visual just gets the message across. And the final benefit is that visuals can really help to reduce anxiety. So as mentioned earlier, this really links in with the child's understanding of what's happening, what's expected of them, what's going to happen next. And so using visuals can really support with reducing any anxieties that the child might face. OK, so we have now thought about what visuals are and also what the benefits are. So now we're going to have a think about how to use visuals at home. So. The first thing we're going to start with is thinking about how we can use visuals at home to help your child follow routine. 
So I want you to have a quick think. What do you use in your day to help you stay organised and to stay on schedule? Why don't you pause the video and have a think about those things? Welcome back. So I hope you had some time to think about what you use to organise your day. So I also had a quick think. So how I plan my day and organise my time is using a calendar or a diary. Um, and I know that my calendar helps me every single day. If I didn't have it, I wouldn't know where I needed to be, what time and who I needed to see. I know if I am ever feeling a bit stressed or overwhelmed, one of the first things I really like to do is write a to do list. So I write everything down. And so by using these visual resources, it really helps us to structure our day and follow those routines and helping to reduce any anxieties we're feeling if we're feeling overwhelmed. So as adults, we have lots of strategies and resources that we use to help manage our day and our schedule. And we all have routines within our day and using these strategies will help us to follow and remember them. So it's important to remember that we all need a break throughout our day too. So we might take a 10 minute coffee break in the afternoon. And that coffee break really helps me to refocus my attention. So these routines and structures and ways of using visuals can help us reduce our feelings of anxiety as we know where we need to be and what we need to do. So we can do the same thing with our children. So we can use different examples from different levels of the scale of visuals. So depending on where your child is at with their level of understanding, we'll give you some examples of different ways you could use these visuals. So using pictures and drawings. So we can use something called a now and next board. The example at the top is a printed now and next board. So when the now activity is finished, you take it off, replace it with the next image and then you put a new image on the next. So it helps the child see what has finished, what's happening now and what's going to happen next. And you can get your child involved with this too by encouraging them to take off the visual that has finished and put it into a finish box or an envelope. Or if you're using the example at the bottom, so like using a whiteboard or a piece of paper, the child can rub off what's happened and then you can redraw what was happening next in the now section. We can also use visual timetables to help support our children's understanding. So here's an example of one that's talking about a morning routine. So having breakfast, washing their face and brushing their teeth. And these are really nice so they can be portable because they're quite small and you could attach it to a key ring or a lanyard um, or you could even carry around a small whiteboard and you could do it that way too. So here's another example of a timetable. This one is made out of Lego so you can literally use anything that might be motivating for your child um, but as long as you're showing them what's happening in the day then that's really great. Here's an example of a drawn out visual timetable. So these are kind of like the black and white line drawing level of visual that we were talking about. Um, and they've just got four things and you'll be working through the timetable. And it could be that your child can tick off what has happened or rub it off if it's on a whiteboard or take it off and put it in a box if it's a visual. We can also use objects and they've got objects for each activity that's going to happen throughout the day. And so when that activity is finished, they'll take away the object and then move on to the next one. So the final example here is a written timetable. So this one has been written out on a whiteboard and times have been included. So if your child is able to tell the time, then it'd be really good to add times on so they can see exactly when things are going to happen. But as we mentioned before, if using a written timetable, you just need to make sure that your child is able to understand what they're reading as well as being able to read it out loud. And here's another example of a timetable for an older child. So this is for a child who's in secondary school and their um, timetable has just been made a bit simpler and colour coded, which can really help to break down the information and make 
this very busy timetable look a little bit more clear. So how do we go about putting these into place then? So we need to think about how much information the child needs. So is a now a next board enough for them? Do they just need to know what's going to happen now and then what's going to happen next? But some other children might like to know what's happening from their whole morning. So then you might use a visual timetable to support that. The best way to try and put something into place like this is to do it jointly with your child so they can take off or tick off for the activities that are finished so they can visually see when an activity has ended. When thinking about home learning or homework, chunking the learning into really achievable parts is a great way to reach success. So this could either be one activity at a time or even just one question. To help with consistency between school and home, make sure to check in with your child's teachers or if they have a speech and language therapist to see what visuals are being used. And this might help if you use the same ones at home to support your child's understanding of what these visuals mean. Try and do use these visuals as consistently as possible. So all day, every day, this will really help your child to learn what they mean and to be able to follow those routines. So it's really important to keep using these visuals. It can be really tempting to take away the visual timetable when you feel that the child knows their routine. But actually, this is the most key part. So you have to keep using them because your child is feeling comfortable and their anxiety is reduced because they know the routine and using that visual timetable will continue to support that. So routine and independence can be promoted at home and school by using the visual timetables, the now and next boards that we've talked about. The next one we're going to talk about is checklists. So checklists can help children and young people become more independent as it allows them to understand what is expected of them and to help them do things on their own. So here are some examples of some different checklists. So the first one on the left is thinking about some homework. So breaking down the activities that you need them to do. And then the last one being check in with you. You could have other checklists, so things about making sure you've got everything in your school bag that you need. Or a morning checklist. So have you brushed your teeth? Did you get dressed? Those kinds of things. So you could use them for learning, but also for home life. The last example there is a weekly homework chart. So this one has all the three children, so Peter, Sally and Josh, and when their homework is due. But you could also make an individual one for your child. But kind of writing out or drawing out when their homework is due might help them to manage their time um, and make sure that they've done everything that they need to do. So using these types of checklists can really help to increase independence and support your child to complete activities on their own because they know what they need to do. So we can also use visuals to show how long an activity will last. And this can be really beneficial for children to show them how long a maybe not so fun activity will last in order to get it done. And then they'll move on to something a bit more fun. So we can use things like sand timers or egg timers, and we can also use timers on our phones or clocks. These are a little bit more hard to understand because they require um, the children to understand the numbers and time. Um, but if your child has that understanding, then they're really good tools to use. So you can you can use visuals to help break learning tasks up. So you may need to start small and work your way up with the time when trying to engage your children in learning. However, it's really, really great to achieve a positive, successful five minute learning task and build up from there rather than having a really stressful and unproductive half an hour session. So by starting really small and in achievable chunks, you're more likely to get success. So, for example, it could be doing five minutes on a worksheet and then you have a quick movement break and then back to the worksheet. Rather than trying to do like 15 minutes of a worksheet. 
expectations for every child will be different and individual so you just need to work from where your child is at. We can also use visuals to support understanding of things like maths problems. So by adding pictures to spoken or written language helps us to understand what the question means. So I'm using a PowerPoint presentation to show you the different examples that they are visuals. So it helps us to see the information and to be able to process that information. So here's an example in maths. So children can find maths vocabulary quite tricky sometimes as the vocabulary can be complicated or we might have words that mean the same things. So drawing it out can really help to make a wordy problem more visual. So here's an example. So the question is, how many sandwiches did each girl get if there were three girls and there were 12 sandwiches? So we've drawn out the different groups and shared the sandwiches out equally. You could also use blocks and break them up into groups. Or if you really wanted to, you could make 12 sandwiches and split them between three different groups. So just using anything visual or objects or pictures can really help to make these, particularly these wordy maths problems, a little bit more easier to understand for our children. We can also use visuals to support understanding of new vocabulary. So it could be vocabulary they're learning in different subjects, so like we were talking about in maths, or it could be new, um, new vocabulary that they come across in their everyday life. And then we feel like the best way for the children to learn new vocabulary is through physical experiences of touching the objects, exploring them um, and having lots of sensory experiences with the vocabulary, which makes it easier for the children to retain and to then learn and use those words. So you could use a resource a bit like this. So this is a word hand and it helps to break down the different aspects of a word to help your child learn and understand it. So you might listen to the words. So think about the sounds that are in the word. What sound does it start with? What sound does it end with? having a think about what it might mean, drawing a picture to help match the word to a meaning, saying the word, and then maybe acting the word out. So by using lots of different sensory elements, it can help your child to take in and learn that new word. Okay, so we have thought about what visuals are, what the benefits of visuals are, how to use visuals at home. And now we're just going to have a think about some key things to remember when using these visuals. So you don't need fancy pictures. Everything is a visual, your face, your body, gestures, pictures, everything. So don't worry if you can't make printed visuals, you can use a piece of paper and draw them. So you don't need anything fancy. Be consistent and the consistency is really key to success. If you're using them throughout the day and across different environments, it will make them really, really successful. But as I said, use the visuals all day, every day. That consistency is what we need. And finally, your child needs to see the visuals. So make sure that you're keeping the visuals at eye level to them. If they're at the, on stock on a wall, make sure they're low down on the wall so they can see them. Or when you're explaining the visuals to them, if you're using a whiteboard, make sure you're down at their level so they can see the pictures and see what you've drawn. OK, so the final thing we want to talk to you about is Makaton signing. And so we mentioned Makaton earlier on when we were thinking about using gesture to support our communication. So what is Makaton? So it's a signing system that we use our hands for and we sign the key words in a sentence. It helps to provide extra visual information and we always talk alongside our signing. Makaton helps to support understanding and expression of language 
and it can really work in reducing a child's anxiety and frustration about communicating. Maxon also forces us to slow down a little bit when we're talking because we need to sign the keywords and so naturally we just start to slow down, which can be really, really beneficial for supporting our child's understanding. So if you're interested in learning Makaton, how can you learn? So Makaton have a website where they have lots of really useful resources for signing. Mr Tumble, so he uses Makaton signing in every episode that he makes. So they're really, really nice things that you can watch together. On YouTube, there is a duo who sing and sign called, uh, called Singing Hands, um, and they've got really lovely videos. Um, if you follow our Facebook page, we post every Sunday, a sign Sunday, so we put a video up um, teaching you a new sign in Makaton. So British Sign Language is a little bit different to Makaton. So Makaton is designed to help hearing people with learning or communication difficulties rather than BSL being a language of the deaf community. And we and in BSL, you sign all the words and the grammar in the sentence. So Makaton is slightly different in that we just uh, sign the key words and we use it alongside talking. So we have managed to get through all of our content. So the last thing we're going to just um, signpost you to are some useful websites and further places to get support. So here are a list of all the different places you can gain different support. As well as some of the other trainings and websites that we've mentioned throughout the session today. We also have an advice line. So if you are a parent or professional who lives or works in Ealing, please do contact us with your queries and questions. We're open from Monday to Friday, one till four, and you'll find the number and the email address in the description box below the video. We have lots of other trainings around speech, language and communication on our YouTube channel, so do go and check those out. And we also have a Facebook page. Um, and um, if you are an Ealing practitioner, then check out on the Ealing CPD online for any upcoming workshops that we might be running. Right, so we have completed all of the content from today. So thank you so much for attending. Um, if you have time, please, please, could you complete our two minute survey just to let us know what you thought of the training and you'll find the link to the survey in the description box below and your feedback means that we can continue to make these workshops freely available online so we're really grateful for any feedback that you have so thank you so much for attending our workshop today on using visuals to support communication we hope to see you back on our youtube channel soon thank you bye bye